so hello everyone today we will be going to discuss about the circuit of the ASP32 drone based on the ASP32 dev kit C and MPU6050 so here goes the connecting diagram this is the MPU6050 which will act as the IMU for our drone and this is the ESP32 module which will act as our processor. Now to connect this, we will be using single core wires. The circuit that I am showing is based on the mini config that I have shown you in the previous video. If you want to use different pins for the MPU6050 and the ESC, then you will have to modify the mini config in the IDF. Now, the MPU6050 VCC will go to 3v3 of the ESP32. The GND pin of the MPU6050 must be going to the GND pin of the ESP32. Otherwise, the data lines will not be connected successfully with the ESP32 module which will make your drone unable to fly. Now, the SCL pin and SDA pins are being mapped to the 32 and 33 pins. SCL is connected to GPIO 33 of the ESP32 and SDA is connected to the GPIO 32 of the ESP32. Note that if the ground is not connected to the ESP32 then the serial lines will not successfully connect to the ESP32 and thus there will be errors in your data. Finally, the interrupt pin of the MPU650 must be connected to the GPIO23 of ESP32. This is because ESP32 by default can't get the default signals of MPU650 without getting an interrupt in the ESP drone firmware. If you are using ESP32-S2 or ESP32-S3 then this int pin is not necessary. Now ESP32 must receive 5 volts on its pin pin so that it doesn't reset. By default the LiPo we are using will be 1S. Therefore the default voltage drop will be somewhere around 3.2 to 3.7 volts. To avoid brownout of the CPU, we will be using a voltage boost module. Now, the ESC will be receiving PWM signals from these pins. The ESC will be a brushed ESC which I have made using some MOSFETs which I have covered in the later part of the video. The motors are connected to the following pins. You must follow this order or else your drone will not fly. Now for the voltage booster part, I will be showing you the voltage booster that I am using. I am using this small voltage booster module that can boost from 3.7 volts to 12 volt or 9 volt or 8 volt or 5 volt. I have selected 5 volt by following the user manual that came with this board. You can do the same too. Basically, I input 3.7 volts to this pin and then I get 5 volts from the other side, which will be connecting to the ESP32 module. I am showing you the close up of this board. If you are able to see that there were two resistors that I have to remove for the board to be able to output 5 volts. 
All the requirements are written in the back side of the book. You can follow this. Now, the connection of the IMU with the ESP32 module has been done successfully. In the next section, I will be going to show you about the brushed ESC and the motor orientations of the drone. All done for now. This is the ESC that I have made using MOSFETs. The MOSFETs that I have used are AO3400A. It can handle a peak current of 5.8 amps. It also has a very low threshold voltage which is suitable for the PWM pins of ESP32. Here I will be showing you the diagram of the MOSFET and how to make it. Here you can use SI2302 but it will be better if you use AO3400A because AO3400A has better current handling capabilities. SI2302 can handle a max of 2.8 amps whereas AO3400A can handle a max current of 5.8 amps. Therefore, it's obvious that AO3400A is the better choice because I have burned many SI2302 in the process. The AO3400 MOSFET looks like this. There is the gate and there is the source. We have to connect the motor pin of ESP32 to the gate of the MOSFET. In the source, we have to supply the negative ground of the battery. We must add a pull up resistor between the gate and the source because it will help in preventing false startup of the motors when we reboot the ESP32. Any value from 1K to 10K is OK. In the output, we will connect a short key diode. Preferably, SS14 or SS34. We will connect a diode in the following pattern. And the cordless motors will be connected to the ESC in the following manner. After all is said and done, you must be able to make the ESC using the zero PCB. The ESC that I have made is very small and thus saves space. Now it's time to talk about the motor orientation. The front right motor has to be anti-clockwise. The right bottom has to be clockwise. The bottom lift have to be anti-clockwise and the top lift has to be clockwise. I have written them in more detail in the page. Note the motor numbers that I have written. This must be connected to the ESC as in the diagram that I have given before. I have also written the orientation of the motor in the page so that it's not confusing. Finally, the orientation of the MPU6050 should match the motors. The wiring output should be on your right hand.
While making this drone, I made an accidental mistake of putting the orientation of the MP650 in the wrong direction, which caused the drone to flip a few times and I couldn't figure out the problem. This was a hassle, so please like, share and comment so that I will be motivated for making these types of videos in the future. Now everything's finished. Now connect your drone to phone and enjoy flying. So now I will show you how to connect a drone with your phone and then operate it through the app that is given. I will post the link to the app in the description below. First of all, we have to connect a drone to the phone using Wi-Fi. I have already connected it. As you can see, the SSID of the drone starts like this. The default password will be this. First of all, I am disconnecting it and forgetting it so that I can show you what the default password is. The default password is 12345678. Now we will connect it. After connection, it will show that the connected Wi Fi has no internet access. Don't worry about it. We have to tap on this and then select Don't Ask Again for this network and click on Yes. After that, we have to open the ESP drone app. After opening the ESP drone app, you will see there are few controls. By default, the joystick will be on the middle. If you want the joystick to be in the downwards direction, you have to go to the settings, in the controller settings, and in this, you have to select this, use full travel for trust. After that, you can also control the PID. If your drone goes to the right, you will move the roll trim to the right. If your drone goes to the left, you will move the roll trim to the left and vice versa. You can change these values according to your drone because not all motors are made same. Therefore this value might differ for your drone. Same for the pitch trim. And here is the advanced flight control. It will enable the high thrust, high pitch and roll values and etc. And make sure that you have selected mode 2 that is left thrust and yaw and right pitch and roll. After that you are ready to go. You have to connect the drone by using this button. If the connection is successful, it will say that it's connected. Now this blue button is for enabling the yaw control. If I disable it, you will see that the joystick only moves up and down, which means the drone won't move in its yaw direction. If I enable it, then you will see that the joystick is free in all directions. That is the joystick and the drone are free to move in its yaw and thrust both. In the right analog joystick, we can see the up and down is for the pitch and right and left is for the roll. Now I have not connected any buzzer with the drone that's why the speaker is not enabled. If you connect a buzzer then you might be able to play it through this microphone and speaker button. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe my channel and share all the videos with your friends. Thank you.